Hey guys, I'm here today to make a video about the um, locker switch on, I believe, a 2007 through 2017 JK Jeep Wrangler. Um, <clears throat> the issue with these switches is once they go out, maybe many people don't know and some people find out the hard way, is once you pull these out, you can't put them back in without actually removing the guts of the locker to be able to put it back in. And so I have found a way that you can put it back in without having to remove the guts. Now, this isn't like some simple, quick, easy fix. It does take a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's just the only way I know of, and I have not seen any answers out there on the internet of anybody providing an answer on how to be able to put one of these switches, and this is what they look like. I've not seen anyone be able to put one of these switches back into the rear end <clears throat> without having to pull the guts. And in fact, even when you do put it back in with the guts out, there's a trick people have. And what they do is they have to extend the spring out, stick some sort of a, you know, a pin or something in there and tie a string to it to hold this open. So when they do actually stick the locker back in, then pull the pin out, this can snap back against the back of the ring. Real quick, the way these work is it sits behind the ring on your locker. When your locker is enabled, it pushes forward and it pulls this with it, which then completes the circuit inside of here. <coughs> Pardon me, you got two wires on here. <clears throat> One of them is gonna have a 12 volt coming into it. The other one's gonna be the out voltage, which is the out wire, which is gonna go to the uh, instrument panel on your dash if you have these lockers installed, if you have a Rubicon, if you don't, um, like mine, I have a Sahara, and I put these lockers on after the uh, after the fact, so I don't have the instrument panel um, lighting or indicator lighting for the lockers. So what I was going to do is put a switch in that does have a separate indicator when the lockers are actually engaged. Found that these switches were bad, and so that's why I'm doing this, and that's why I'm making the video is for those people who uh, may have had the same problem and didn't know how to get these in there without uh, without going and pulling the rear end out. Or front end either one it's the same the same process for the front and the back end uh, both of mine were bad I've already done the front and I've done it successfully so I know that this works and so with that being said I'll try to run through the process here I'm sure I'll edit and maybe fast forward through the video <clears throat> just so I can capture the most important parts the things that everybody's gonna need to see um, <clears throat> what I have to do to this this is a brand new switch um, it's a cheap one um, so it's like a Dorman brand switch, so it's cheaper than the other ones. I saw reviews on it on Amazon, people saying that it was no good, it didn't work, had problems. So, um, by looking at it, I can't see any difference from the OEM switch that was in the Jeep that I pulled out and fixed and put back in versus this one. And so when I pull this apart, I'll be able to get into the guts and I'll be able to take a look at what it looks like inside. Um, I'll have to cut all this plastic away from here. Um, this is a hard, like a hard plastic connector that has two prongs that sit inside of here. <clears throat> I'll show that once I get it apart. But I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that plastic off, then I'll show you what I'll do before the next step. So I'll come back after I get that plastic cut off there. All right, guys, so this one looks a little different than the factory one once you get that rubber off there. Um, the factory one has kind of like a reddish color, hard plastic stuff here, where this one looks like a clear type stuff and it looks just like a glue and that's probably what the factory stuff is too just a different color what i'm going to be looking at is right here on the edge of this is there's a ring it's like a lip that pushes in and that holds this whole entire thing inside of here inside of this little uh, shaft if you will there is or chamber there is the electronics for this switch that complete it and so we need to get inside there. What I found that I am able to do is if I take my, um, if, if I just take my little um, uh, Dremel tool, and this is, this is the adapter that I'm using on the Dremel, is just the little cutoff wheel. And all I do is run that right along the edge of this. I'll run it right along the edge of this piece uh, right here. I'll just run it right along that lip to get all that off there. So that way I can wiggle this loose and pull the entire thing out as one piece. So I'll cut that off and I'll show you what it looks like after. 
so I got this thing cut. I just used a, a Dremel tool on it, and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see where on on this at the very top where there's still where there's no longer any uh, marking for it being a nut is where I cut. There's a line right there. I cut all the way around, and what that does is that cuts that lip loose, so you're gonna be able to pull this connector apart. So I'm gonna use a pair of uh, vice grips to hold that part that I cut, and I'll just use a pair of channel locks to hold the nut. And if you, if this doesn't work, if you have trouble with this, um, you might have to put a little bit of heat on it to be able to break anything. There may be glue or something inside, but what I do is I'll take it like that and then just, there we go. See, so just give a little twist back and forth and then try to kind of pull out on it at the same time. And you're gonna work that piece slowly apart out of there. And then, so you can see inside, th this looks just like the, this looks just like the stock one. Let me get rid of these tools. I'll change my camera angle here so I can show you the pitch. So I'll see what I'm talking about. But um, these these ones look just like the they look just like the stock. Yeah. So there's the little Dremel that I used. I just used that little blade to cut that out, and then uh, it ends up looking just like the stock one. So you're not getting much different when you buy this one from from Amazon. So this one, you can see, um, it has this piece here. And so this, uh, with the way this works, this sits on, on this little tiny piece here. And in fact, you're gonna have to take this entire thing apart when you go to put it back in. And this is where it, the trick comes in to know uh, some of the things I use to be able to get it back in there. Cause that's the part that's tricky is knowing what to do to get it back in there. So, um, you know, I, I actually use the um, shielding from a 12 gauge wire to attach to this thing um, to hold it. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Let me grab this over here. So, all right, so anyway, real quick, you're gonna pull this Pull that pin out of there, and then this whole thing will slide out. And that comes out like that. And then in here you have a washer and you have a spring. So there's your washer and your spring. And the, so it goes on, the spring goes in, and then your washer goes in, and then you'll stick in your pin from this side, which is gonna have this mushroom head shape sticking out. So you stick that back in there. And once you have it, when you have it out here, it's pretty easy to, to see what we're going to have to do underneath is um, we, we've got to get a piece. We've got to get a piece of the, uh, the shielding I was talking about, which is I just used red because that was the wire that I actually just happened to have. So I used that and I used it underneath there to hold it in place. And you actually use it to kind of maneuver it um, into the right spot. Because you have to be able to stick it far enough back in there to grab onto the back side of that ring and then pull it back toward you. And once you do that, you can use the wire to actually pull it the rest of the way through. Um, let me let me grab the piece I used. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the way I did it. When you're up underneath there, you're going to take this piece of wire and this shielding is tight enough that when you slide it over that, see, it'll hold the wire or that it holds that pin in place. So to, to simulate what you're going to be doing underneath is you stick it into the hole of the differential and you're going to be able to have movement with it, but you're going to be able to stick it far enough back in and turn it so it locks behind that ring and you'll be able to hold it in place like that and then run this through here and it has the spring on it. While you hold on this, you can you can put these pieces on there. And you remember, then at that point, you're gonna have this piece screwed in underneath already. So that's gonna be held down. Then you throw your washer on here. And once you get your washer put on there, the tricky part is when you have it underneath, you could see under there where you need to put that pin back. Out here, you could do it easily, but when it's locked around that ring, you don't have uh, as much room to work with. 
So what I've done is one, once I got it pulled through and I got it all set up underneath there, is I just take a pair of needle nose vice grips and I grab onto this piece here to hold it in place because then you have to use like a screwdriver to push back on that spring so you can work that clip in there and put it back on because you're going to have to put the clip back on inside of this little nut housing here. So we'll get to that part next and I will show you guys what that looks like up underneath the, uh, up underneath the Jeep here. So see you guys in just a minute. All right, guys, we're underneath the Jeep now. I got the camera set up, hopefully with a good enough angle that you'll see how this is gonna uh, have to happen. Um, you got a much better angle than I do. I actually have the gas tank and this skid plate right in my way of where this is at, but you could see the hole where the old switch was, which I pulled out. Um, that one was bad, so I just, uh, I had plugged it for the time because um, I took it out and I couldn't put it back in. So I just plugged it off for the time. <clears throat> um, anyway, so here's my here's my little plunger, if you will, with a little red piece on there. I'm gonna stick that back in. And if I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go at that angle, kind of like that, putting it, pointing it toward the front of the Jeep or toward the drive shaft side of the differential. You wanna go in at an angle, going in it that way, and then bring it back toward the other direction of the, of the, of the um, drive shaft. So you can see now I've gotten locked on it. And if you're on it in the right place, what I can do, well, I lost it. I guess what I should do before I do that is you can stick this on here. So that way, once you find it, you'll be able to slide your, your bolt that's gonna be screwing in your hole back in place. So I got that there. You hold the wire so you could slide it over that. Oh, feels like it may have came loose. Uh, I didn't say it was going to be easy, but um, probably better than take, taking apart the entire differential. Um, although, you know, it really just depends. Some, some of you guys might take your Jeeps apart a lot or get into the differential a lot. I just put these lockers on here and found they had bad switches, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, I just didn't want to have to, I don't want to have to get into the I just put the covers on these differentials, so I don't want to have to get in there to do that. So, all right, so um, that's in place. Uh, I got to grab a wrench so I can tighten this thing down, and then uh, we'll jump back in here. All right, guys, I got my wrench now, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this thing down real quick here. Um, it takes a 19 or a three quarter. I'm using a three quarter because my 19 is too long for the front, so I couldn't loosen it this is a shorter wrench so it makes it a little bit easier for me not to have to worry about hitting stuff so. <coughs> put a little teflon tape on this nut before you put it in there um, there's no pressure on the rear end um, fluid but it's just a it's precautionary so that you know you don't want dust or any dirt getting in there and you don't want the, you don't want the fluid coming out of there. So these are the needle nose um, vice grips I was talking about. So once I have that in there, once you have it in the right, if you have it in the right place, you'll see that you can push it in so far and pull it back so far. You can see I can't pull it past that lip of there. So that tells me I'm, I'm locked on that ring just like it's supposed to be. Um, it can't fall in anywhere now. So, as um, long as you have this screwed in, you don't have to worry about losing this thing now. Like, it can't go in there, so you can't lose it, because it is a, burger, a booger to try and get that thing set, because obviously it can push that far back, and you got to get that ring to lock on it farther out here. And with the vice grips on it, there's a spring inside of it. You can actually pull it this way just a little bit, enough that gives you um, the play you need in order to put that... that uh, to put that pin on there or that that little c clamp on there so um i'm just gonna get this locked on in here in place and then i'll go ahead and stop the video i'll show you guys what it looks like after i get it back together and um maybe explain some of the tools and some of the tricks i use to put it back together because this part is the probably probably about the hardest part is getting this little tiny pin back in there all right guys i just want to show you what that looks like once you get all that put back together when you have that C-clamp and stuff on there, um, you can see that what you'll do is be able to push it in 
and it'll return back to the home position there once you have that in the right spot. And the other thing too I forgot to mention was you should put your spring and washer on before you pull that wire off there. So that way you'll be able to get those to guide right on there pretty easy. Then you can put your vice grips on there. Then you can get your C-clamp, work it on. I too used two little um, flathead screwdrivers to work it around until I was finally able to pop it on there. And now we have that. So the last step is going to be to put that switch on that we took off and then just use some plastic epoxy to glue it down and it'll be all done. So that'll be it. All right, guys, I'm just changing the camera angle here so that way you can get a look at what the finished thing looks like. So I put the plug back on, returned the plug back into its position there, and then I put some good um, plastic weld on there so it'll, it'll uh, hold that plastic in here um, in, between, in between that screw and the plastic. You can see some of my epoxy drip there, but that's all right. So then it goes out to its plug. And so um, the way I tested the front one was I put the plug on it and I ran a positive uh, to one side and then I ran my 12 volt uh, DC tester to the other side. And when I turned my locker on, I got uh, 12 volts coming out of the other side of the switch. So I knew it was working. So um, <clears throat> like I said, it's not a super easy task. I think you could probably change the whole thing out in about uh, maybe 45 minutes if you're really lucky at getting that C-clip back on, um, and maybe even 30 minutes um, if you're really lucky at it, but I'd say maybe lay, lay aside an hour to get the whole job done, and um, like I said, it's, it's going to be a lot easier than changing out that whole, uh, you know, pulling out the whole rear end and having to drain your oil and put new... Um, put new silicone and gasket maker on there and do all that so um it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty easy job for someone who's done a lot of stuff when it comes to like electronics or um if you're good uh just with working with things in general i would say that i wouldn't take this on if you don't have most of the tools that you'll need which would be uh, some needle nose vice grips some small sets of um flathead pliers, a Dremel tool, uh, just to cut that connector off there. And, um, and then some, some of that insulation from the wire. That's really the trick in order to be able to get it done. So, um, let me know what you guys think. If you have any suggestions or anything that you want to add or anything you think might make it better, I'm sure more people would like to hear since this is the first solution I've seen on replacing one of these without pulling those gears. So let me guys know what you think. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, be safe out there on the trails.